Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Thank God. You, Praise Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everywhere you are now, Thank you've you. got the right and the privilege to thank God. Not only the right and the privilege to thank God, but right now, know that while you are thanking him, he's moving on your behalf. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Ephesus Ministries again. We're streaming live on Facebook. Also, we are streaming on Zoom. And uh, if you know somebody that you'd like to share this with, Please, please, wherever you are, share this. And uh, you can even get on the phone and call somebody and tell them that there is a time of prayer, a time of fellowship. And there's going to be a message from the Lord today that's going to bless somebody's heart and somebody's spirit. Come on and be in worship with us today. God bless. Uh, we are not going to have a long service today, but just before I preach the gospel, we're going to have our opening scripture at our opening prayer this morning. Praise God for his word. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, that you blessed us. You blessed us with the activities of our lambs, oh Lord, sight to see, and we thank you for it. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do, Lord Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, as we fall into dire temptation to turn our will and life over to you, Lord. Believing and trusting in you and not in ourselves, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the Church of Ephesus. We ask you to bless the members, O oh Lord Jesus, bless the pastors. Father God, hallelujah, bless them with good health, O oh Lord Jesus. We ask you to bless the whole church, O oh Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Bless them, O oh Lord. We pray in healing in their lives, O oh Lord Jesus, deliverance in their lives. We ask you, O oh Lord, to do for the, for the fourth what we cannot do for ourselves, Lord. Help us to be a blessing for a sick and dying world, Lord Jesus. Father God, help us, O oh Lord Jesus, and guide us and show us the way. Father God, we acknowledge we can do nothing without you, Lord. Father God, only in you, Father God, we live, breathe, and have our being, O oh Lord, and we thank you for it. Father God, thank you for saving us, O oh Lord. Thank you for blessing us in spite of our faults, our shortcomings. But we know no good thing dwells in this flesh of ours, O oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You said the heart of a man is desperately wicked. Who should know it? Only you, Lord Jesus. And we just want to thank you for all that you have done. Your healing power endure forever. Rain down upon the church, O oh Lord. Rain down upon your people, O oh Lord Jesus. Healing and deliverance. And we thank you for this day. We praise you for it. We ask you to bless the service, Father God, as it go forth today. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading is coming from Psalms 136 and 3. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords. His, his mercy endure forever. I read Psalms 136 and 3. Praise God for the opening prayer. And for the scripture this morning, our opening prayer was from Deacon Will Rogers. And uh, the scripture reading was by Minister Leroy Pete. Thank both of you for that. This morning is not going to be a long service. We, we make an attempt to be sure. We're so glad that you take the time to sign in and sit down. And we make an attempt not to uh, hold you long. We recognize the fallacy of human attention when we are not moving around. So it won't be long. This morning, I must admit, I am a very transparent person. I admit that I'm, I am preaching from a very strange personal place this morning. Uh, yesterday, I attended the funeral of a very dear friend of mine, been a friend for over 40 years, very dear friend. We worked together, carpooled together. And after we both retired, we had lunch together occasionally and um, just were very dear friends. That was um, Deputy Superintendent Albert Hall, who was went through the Department of Corrections with me 
and uh, it, it's, it's always tough losing a friend. At the same time that his funeral was going on, there was the funeral of another friend of mine, not a very, very close friend, but yet a dear friend in ministry. That was Bishop Stanley Johnson. Bishop Johnson did a lot of ministry here in the city of Buffalo and of late uh, passed to the church at Niagara Falls. I preached for him two or three years ago. He worked hard and diligently in ministry. A man of great faith and very much a loss in ministry. And uh, I hope I'm free to share this. This morning, this morning, I was informed of the death of another very dear friend, Pastor Franklin McClellan at Ephesus. Uh, I know um, most of you would remember Elder McClellan. I preached a number of times at his church. I think it was God's Temple of Grace over on Haven Street, the son of the late Bishop McClellan and uh, the brother of um, Sister Beatrice Rouse down at Holy Temple. Losing another friend is, is very, very touching this morning. Sometimes people think that if you are a preacher, a pastor, when you deal with these things, it's just a, a part of life. But always uh, when you lose someone, no matter who you are, they take just a little piece of your heart along with them. And it makes me realize that we, I've been talking with Pastor Shannon and uh, Sister uh, Rachel Mapp Morrison about doing another grief session. And I'm recognizing that we, we, we really need to do it. Even where I work, I work with people who I recognize a lot of their anger and a lot of their frustration. And oftentimes when we, we hurt, sometimes just in a day-to-day -day part of our lives, we may not express that hurt, that pain, and that frustration about the losses that we're suffering, but it comes out in other ways. And uh, I, I very much clearly hear the voice of God saying, we, we can't just come in and sing some songs and pray some prayers and read some scriptures and say that everything is all right. We've got to deal with those issues that really cause us to hurt, those issues that really cause us to have pain. And so we're going to be announcing very shortly, we're going to do a uh, um, couple more grief sessions. How do we deal with loss? Somebody might say, well, I thank God I haven't really lost anybody. COVID hasn't taken anybody. Um, other things haven't taken anybody. Some other people <coughs> just sort of say, uh, I can deal with it, but we need to deal with it. And so we're going to be announcing that very shortly about doing some of these sessions. I'm going to do word from God today and um, very shortly we will be finished. Would you give me 15 or 20 minutes of your time? Um, this is from the book of James, the book of James. Um, verse 16, very specifically. And then after I read verse 16, uh, give me permission to go back and read this entire section of scriptures. Uh, remember that I'm one of those who believe that the word of God speaks for itself much better than I can. We have somehow uh, taken the words of Jesus and we have readjusted them to fit society. Jesus merely said to his disciples and apostles, go and preach the gospel. Everybody that believes and, and uh, accepts the gospel will be saved. Those who believe not will be damned. Somehow in our contemporary society and even long ago, we have taken that word preach and we have uh, done what we want to do with it. And uh, we even we even taught, you've got to take the time not only in study, but write a lot of stuff down and, and sort of interpret it a lot. But the gospel speaks for itself. Today, this is a word, again, that, that speaks into my heart. And hopefully it will speak into your heart for itself. The, the King James Version of uh, this is the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. This is what the King James Version says. It says, confess your faults one to another 
and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I need to do somewhat of a disclaimer on this scripture, a disclaimer for the scripture itself. It does say confess your faults one to another. Let me do a very simple disclaimer. Don't go out telling folk your business. Don't, don't lay your stuff on folk. There are some things that you need to keep between you and the Lord. I was listening to Pastor Joel Osteen this week, and Pastor Joel Osteen always begins his sermons with uh, a little comical story. And on this particular day, his story was about uh, three clergymen that went out fishing in a boat. He said there was a Catholic priest, there was a Jewish rabbi, and a Protestant pastor. While they were out, they said, it's just the three of, uh, three of us out here, and uh, we need to help strengthen each other. And so since the Bible said, confess your faults, let's just confess our faults one to another. Said uh, the priest said to them, well, every now and then, I like to just have me a real good stiff drink and just enjoy me some liquor and just make me feel good. And I certainly don't want the community to know about me and my drinking. The rabbi said, well, I'll tell the truth. Uh, I've got a gambling habit and I just love going to the casino and gambling and I just can't stop. And finally, the Protestant minister said, well, I think my biggest fault is I cannot keep a secret. I gossip and I can't wait to get off this boat to tell everybody what we've been talking about. And so I need to tell you today, uh, the Bible says confess your faults, but I'm going to start this message by saying that did not mean go and tell everybody your business. When the Bible says here, confess your faults one to another, it meant very, very clearly that, that, that you ought to have the kind of fellowship with friends and sisters and brothers that you can talk to them about the things which you need them to help you pray about. In the Gospels, Jesus was saying, uh, Two things that let me point out. He said, first of all, uh, if you bring your gift to the altar, if you come at the time of prayer and you find while you're there at the time of prayer that you and your brother have ought against each other. He said, leave your gift at the altar and go and make amends with your brother. And then come back to the altar. There are some things that, that you need to talk very specifically about specific people about and said, this is something that we need to fix together. On another occasion, Jesus says, if you've got something that has been offensive to you, with somebody in the church, he said, go to that brother. Talk to him about it. If he hears you, then everything is well. But if he doesn't hear you, he said, find a witness. Yeah, there, there are some people in the church who are spiritually strong, who are solid in their ability of wisdom and giving advice and can keep their mouth shut but who can help you pray about situations? So he said, find another witness and you and that witness go and talk to the person. He said, and then if he still refuses to hear, take it to the church. No, that does not mean get up doing testimony service. That does not mean get up and tell everybody in the church. That does not mean gossip, but it means go and talk with the pastor. Sometimes 
you can't even talk with the pastor. Ephesus, you have heard me saying very clearly, there are, there are some things concerning women's issues, for example, that I, I don't wanna hear about because I'm a man, 100%. I don't think like a woman. My um, late mother-in-law, Mother Anderson, um, used to sometimes say, you know what, you need to find your feminine side. And I, and I would always say, nope, Jeff ain't got one. I'm sorry, I ain't got no feminine side. And so sometimes there are, there are women's issues that you need to talk with the church mother about. And, and be sure it's a praying church mother. Be sure it's a church mother who is wise and, and does not gossip and does not talk. When Pastor Debbie was alive, I think all of the women in the church knew there's some things you need to talk to her about and not Pastor Jeff. There are men's issues that you need to talk with the pastor about. You need to talk with uh, some of the deacons about if they are sober and solid. And thank God at Ephesus they are. That you need to talk with the some of the male elders and some of the ministers about. Uh, Minister Pete read the scripture this morning. I'm so glad that sometime, brothers, there are things that if you can't reach the pastor, you can talk with Minister Pete. Other ministers about. And so when the Bible says confess your faults one to another, it wasn't talking about gossip. It wasn't talking about some of those things that you need to deal with God about. If you've got some secret sins, uh, people say that before you can go to heaven, you got to confess those sins and tell everybody, no, no, you don't. Tell God about it. Tell God about it. Confess it to God and repent and let God hide it in the sea of forgetfulness. But then you cannot neglect the second part of that scripture. He didn't just say confess, he said pray one for another. Let me raise the question to all of you who are listening to me now. Do you pray for other people in the church? Do you spend as much time for a praying for the, the, the weak people. Everybody is not as strong as everybody else. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we want to walk all over people that we consider not to be stronger than we are. But do you spend just as much time praying for them as you do walking all over them? People somehow who don't seem to live as sainted as you do, Rather than sometimes you, you may see somebody in a fault, you may see somebody in a mistake and you can't wait to call and tell somebody, but have you told God about it first? Have you prayed and said, God, help brother so-and-so in his walk, help sister so-and-so in her walk. Do you really pray for each other? Two things. First of all, you got to be careful about how you pray for people and, and how you help other people in their walk. Because let me give you a promise. You may see what they are doing, but somebody else sees what you are doing. I know, I hope not. I hope now nobody said, but pastor, I won't do anything. Yes, you do. You're a human being. And if you have gotten to be 100% saved and sanctified, that just means that your mind is screwed up a little bit because you're not seeing the whole picture. You can sit at your house, never walk out the door, don't drink, don't smoke, don't, as the old folks said, don't commit no adultery. Never do any of that wrong stuff but sit up with the spirit of pride. Pride is against God. Self-condemnation is against God. Never look askance at someone else and don't see. It, just the fact that you're looking askance at someone else and fail to pray for them is a sin in itself. He said, pray for one another. Secondly, people who don't believe in God call something karma. Karma, karma comes around. You may catch me 
today, but your time is coming around. Jesus said it even better than that, though. Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Here's a greater reason. The second reason why we need to do that, he said, so that you may be healed. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. That's how God provides healing. He recognizes that when we join our spiritual forces together, when we join our hearts together, when we join our minds together, you may be strong in one area and I'm weak in another area, but then at the same time, I may be weak in one area, I may be strong in one area and you're weak in another area, but then when we join our hearts and our minds together and we pray for each other, God, and Satan too cannot see the weakness of our individuality when our strengths are put together and our strong points outweigh our weak points because we are together. We need to pray for each other. Stop looking at me wrong and pray for me. I cannot afford to look at you askance. Whoever you are, what are you doing? Whatever you're doing, I need to be about praying for you because then that's how I get my healing. Jesus taught that in the Lord's Prayer. First part of the Lord's Prayer was acknowledging God and, and it was about our relationship with God. Please look, if you will, at that Lord's Prayer analogous and beside the commandments that Jesus gave. He said, first of all, acknowledge God and who God is. But then the second part of that Lord's prayer talks about how we live with each other. He said, Lord, forgive me my debts as I forgive others their debts. The commandments, he said, here are the commandments simply. If you can't remember all of the other things, remember this. He said, here are the commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, with all of thy strength. Love God with everything you have in you. Make sure your connection with God is good. And then, very simply, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. The answer, my sisters and brothers, to all of the conflicts in life is somehow love. If we could get people to understand, just, just love God and everything else works. Just love God and everything else works. Just love God and everything else works. Confess your faults. And the last part of that verse says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Woo! <laughs> If you pray, and it's out of the sincerity of your heart, God says, it, it really works. Let me take a moment and read this entire passage because that part is good. I love that part, but um, um, when, we, when we put it in context, it's, it's so powerful, so strong. And, and, and I'm going to read the starting of the 13th verse. I love the Message Bible. So the Message Bible speaks to us in a very contemporary way. Look what this says in the Message Bible, starting with the 13th verse. Are you hurting? Pray. 
Do you feel great? Sing. Are you sick? Call for the elders of the church to pray and anoint you with oil in the name of the master. Believing, prayer will heal you. And Jesus will put you on your feet. Listen, when we pray for each other, Jesus says, you know what? I heard you, and right now I'm moving. I, I heard you praying. I heard you call me. And right now, I'm taking care of it. Right now, I'm fixing it. Oh, I wish we had an opportunity today to have testimony service, because I would ask, is there anybody here in this room? And right now, while I'm on Zoom, I, I want to know if there is anybody here that has been sick and you know that prayer changed thing for you prayer works prayer changes things but it goes even deeper look at what he continues to say talking about prayer and if you will sin you'll be forgiven you know i'm glad i can i can uh, uh get on my knees and tell god god i know i i failed to measure up God, I know that this day, there are some things that I thought and, and some things that I've said that, that maybe don't sit just that well with you. Listen, I, I, I try to never let a day go by. I, I don't let myself get in the bed before I say, God, forgive, hallelujah, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I don't make a list. I don't try to itemize. I don't try to name things. I don't even promise myself that uh, if God will forgive me for this today, I'm not going to do it tomorrow because the Bible said his mercies are new every day. But I just say, God, forgive me because the Bible says if you've sinned, you'll be forgiven. But then after you're forgiven, it said you'll be healed inside and out. Listen, saints. We don't have to walk around being burdened by sin. We don't have to walk around and struggle. I, I occasionally still deal with people who say, I'm, I'm not trying to just be saved right now because I still got some issues with some stuff. That's why you ought to pray because you will never solve those issues. It takes God to do it. And he very simply does it. He said, listen, I, I've already taken care of it. It's fixed. It's finished. Just bring it to me. And if you sin, you'll be forgiven and healed. With verse 16, he said, make this your common practice. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and heal. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. Oh, you want to find something powerful. Find a praying person. Hallelujah. Find a praying person. Woo, I wish I was in church because I would ask somebody now, has that been your experience? Do you know that's true? That if you can find somebody who prays, you know you run up on some power. Ephesus, a praying church is a powerful church. Now for, I think, let's see, March, April, May, June, July, August is just about over for six months. We have been praying daily. And sometimes I say, oh, God, I, I believe maybe people are getting tired and maybe I should go ahead and give them a break and say we're going to change our program and we're not going to pray every day. And I'm so glad for the Holy Ghost. I'm so glad for the spirit that tells me you can't stop praying. You can't stop praying. Wouldn't it be a shame if the hospitals said our nurses and our doctors and our uh, AIDS, they're tired. So we have just, this pandemic has been enough. We're going to close the hospital down and we're just not going to treat people anymore. Wouldn't that be a shame? Church, we cannot stop praying seven days a week. We've got to keep the prayer line open. You know what I love about God? God does not say you need to get a thousand people praying. You need to get a hundred people praying. You need to be sure 20 people are praying. He merely says that 
if there are two or three gathered together in my name there, am I in the midst of them? But he makes it clear in this verse because he now goes on, let me read it. He said the prayer of a person living right with God. If there is just one who will pray, God says, I'll give power. Is anybody here that says, well, you know what, Pastor? If there's nobody else, I'm going to try to be that one. If there's nobody else, I'm going to commit myself to saying, I'm going to pray. I'm going to have a life of prayer. You know what I pray every day? Not only uh, do I pray, God, forgive me, but I pray, God, would you just let the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost that you promised be a part of my life? And would you let the Holy Ghost continue to give me a praying spirit? I can't walk around praying out loud all day. Other stuff comes and sometimes my mind gets on other stuff, but, but give me a praying spirit somewhere in my soul, somewhere in my heart. Let that continue to be a prayer resonating because you know what happens if there is a praying spirit, if there is a, a, a prayer resonating in your spirit, sometime when you sit down and you are quiet, that prayer will raise up in your soul and you can feel yourself praying. Listen to what he says here. He says, Elijah, for instance, one man, human, just like us, prayed hard that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't, not a drop for three and a half years. Listen, I believe that if God can be sure that there is even one person praying, God will say, you know what, I know there's an election coming up in November, and let me say, if you haven't registered to vote, register and vote register and vote. But God says, I I'm going to let people vote. But if I can get one person to pray, I will change this whole nation. God, let it be me. He said, then he prayed that it would rain. And it did. One man prayed and said, God, don't let it rain. There was a famine in the land. And then he went back and says, okay, God, now let it rain. And God says, okay, I hear you. And it did. Do you know, my sisters and brothers, whatever is going on in your life, whatever is going on in your situation, if you pray, God will answer. The showers came. And everything started growing again. My dear friends, if you know people who have wondered, I'm still reading off from God's truth, don't write them off. Listen, I've got some people that I know who I'm saying, oh, God, they don't want to be saved. They don't want to act right. And, and again, I'm very transparent. Sometimes I say, you know what? Y'all don't want to be right. I'm finished with you. <laughs> but I'm so glad now God reminds me. He says, don't write them off. Go after them. Get them back. And you will have rescued precious lives from destruction and prevented an epidemic of wandering away from God. I'm so glad for God's word today. And let me simplify the word. God's word very simply is if you pray, I will answer and I will work. Listen, while you are listening to me today, if there is anybody here who, who will say, Pastor, you know what? I want that prayer life that you're talking about. I want that relationship with God that you are talking about. I want to be able to say, God, hear my prayer and know that while God is hearing, he changes things. Right now, while you're listening, very simply, you can bow your head, close your eyes, and, and you're not bowing your head and closing your eyes because of God, but it is because for a moment, would you just wipe out everything else and say, God, Hear me pray. Let's pray. Now, God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, your word says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And now we are bowing. Because in the name of Jesus, there is power. His name brings us victory. His name brings us not only the power of the cross, but the power of the resurrection. And we thank you today for Jesus. In him, we have life and that more abundantly. 
And so, because Jesus gives us the victory through you, we come to you today in prayer. We've got so much we need to pray about. So many things we want to ask you. So much, God, that we need to talk to you about. Even while we are praying, we feel our insufficiency to come before such a great God. But your word says that even though we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit makes an intercession for us according to your will. And so today we come, Master. We come with the humility of humanness, but we come in the grace of your son, Jesus. First of all, God, if our relationship with you is not like it ought to be, you're a father. And so treat us like your little children that you love. And fold us now in your arms. Draw us close to you. Give us the assurance of your grace and your mercy. And then, God, we pray for healing. Healing for our bodies. Healing for our spirits. Healing for our minds. And then, God, we pray that you would provide for us provide our daily needs. If there is anybody here, God, that is anxious over paying bills, anxious over taking care of themselves and their families, God, your promise is that even if the little birds didn't have to toil, but they are fed, that you'll do the same for us. The word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And so we know today, God, that no matter what's going on in our lives, we are not forsaken. And so now we thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. But above all, we thank you for salvation. So that even as we end today, you're with us in Jesus' name. And if you will, let me close our prayer today with this little chant that you hear me so often saying, I've been singing it since I was taught it in school as a little boy. It says, hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us our needs. Amen. Be assured today that God's word is true, that if you receive his word and that you believe, it changes your life. Be assured that if you've prayed, God certainly answers prayer. Listen, tonight, Ephesus, we will see you in prayer right here at 6.30 tonight and every night. And if you're on the line, if you're on our Zoom line now and, and uh, you haven't joined us in prayer, you can come right back here to the Zoom site tonight at 6.30 and join us in prayer as every week. Wednesday night, we go into Bible study right after prayer for 30 minutes, beginning at seven o'clock. And we will be so delighted to have you with us. As I end today, uh, you can go in the chat section, if you will, go in the chat section and see the ways that you can give to this ministry. Even though our church buildings are closed, uh, ministry still goes on and expenses still go on. And God will certainly bless you if you give. God bless. God be with you until we meet again. Praise God, everybody. God bless.